These questions are asking you, all right, we've gotten something we want to measure, a whole bunch of people have measured it, or I myself have measured it multiple, multiple times, and um, then you take the average, okay? Now, I think, just let me know, on this first question, all of the uh, measurements are in this ballpark, but they're all to the nearest, what is, is it, centimeters? Meters? Yeah. Millimeters. Okay, so all to the nearest millimeter, yeah? So, what are the actual numbers? Can you tell me, because some people have taken my text books. 256, 254, there are going to be some below, yeah, okay, so you get the idea. So in other words, and in fact I'll use the other side of this room now, the instrument that we're working with is clearly to the nearest millimeter. That's all the accuracy that we really have. Okay. But then what happens is, as you know, to work out an average, we how, what do we do with all those numbers? You add, all together. add them all together and divide you divide by however many measurements you have. And this is the number we come up with, yes? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Now there's a problem with this number, in that this number sort of gives us the impression that we have more accuracy than we really can actually measure. Okay? Like it looks to this that we can get to the tenth of a millimeter, but we can't. No one can. We're all using the same instrument. Okay? Um, I mean, I could have gotten even more if I had more measurements um, and taken the average. I could have like you know, whatever, whatever. All these different decimal places. But they're all just artificial. None of them could actually have been measured with this instrument, right? So therefore, the answer, wisely, takes the numbers, all of the averages, right? Uh, sorry, all the scores, and then the, therefore the average, and it rounds them. Now they've chosen to round to this accuracy, to zero decimal places of accuracy. Why is that the accuracy they've chosen? It's not, it's not arbitrary, it's not one, it's not like two significant figures. Why is this? Maybe because the molar didn't have... All the other ones, right? Every other measurement that went into here, all of these guys, these were all to the nearest millimeter. Yeah? So therefore, what this should be is also to the nearest millimeter. If you want to think about it this way, um, I want you to imagine if all of us right now measured an object, okay, and suppose, um, you know, 24 out of 25 of us got this measurement and one person got this one okay now when you have a look at that when you go ahead and you calculate the average i expect because there's one person who is slightly lower right there will be an average of 254.99 whatever whatever right because there's one person who's slightly lower okay but when we say like what are we trying to get at as the best measurement clearly this is the best one Right? Like almost everyone has measured this and that's the accuracy of our actual instrument. Okay? So therefore, you take the average, it is right to infer that we have to approximate. They don't tell you to approximate, but the approximation is kind of implied by what you used in the first place. This thing itself is approximate. So the approximation kind of comes along for the ride. Does that make sense? So you're measuring to the nearest millimeter, then that's what you end up with, or nearest centimeter or kilometer or whatever it happens to be. Okay, so I want you to, um, if you've not finished those questions yet, just leave a little bit of space and make this subheading, okay? Because this is kind of getting at the same idea, limits of accuracy. Um, we talked about this as the third category of error. Do you remember that? What were the other two categories? So we started with S. Um, scale errors, which is like, like parallax or if there's a bad scale, and start errors when you're not quite, you know, beginning at zero, okay? So, this one's really important because you actually have to do a bit of mathematical work here. I want to introduce some terminology and some language to you because when you've got language, when you've got terminology, you can describe a problem that you can solve it. So firstly, we talk about what's the limit of reading, right? What's the closest, most accurate thing you can read on an actual instrument? So what that means is, what that's equivalent to is the smallest unit that's measured out. We've been talking about millimeters and centimeters, right? So call this the smallest unit on the instrument. Okay. Now therefore, do you remember you were looking at um, that sort of fictional ruler there and I think it had like 13 and 14 and 15, something like that. And then they placed an object on top and you might have had it there. Okay. Now I think most of us here can see, well it's closer to 13 than it is to 14. It's somewhere in between. But I'm going to go ahead and round down because that's the limit of reading on this object, okay, on this instrument. But it could have been on either side. Like clearly it's not exactly 13. So how far away would I have to be from 13 to decide 
Oh, now it's longer. It's actually closer to 14. How far would I have to go? I have to go exactly halfway, right? So if I had a new object, and instead it was like here, okay? Because I've passed that magic halfway point, I've said, oh, now it's closer to that one. It's still not exactly closest to that, but it's going to be, you know, when I'm rounding, that's going to give me a better result, okay? So therefore, we talk about this idea of, wrong color. We talk about this idea of the greatest possible error. What's the furthest you could actually be away from the real measurement that it is, right? And you guys told me it was about halfway, right? You can either go halfway too long or halfway too short, okay? So therefore, what's the biggest error it could be? Well, you look at the limit of reading and you halve it, and you can go up or down that amount, okay? So the greatest possible error will be half the limit of reading. Now we'll get to the puzzle minus in a second, and we'll mention that. You've already done this, right? If I therefore say, okay, I measure with this thing, and I say 13 centimeters, right? It could be 13, or it could be 13.1, or 13.2, or 13.49, and I'd still say 13, right? I could go in the other direction. It could have been 12.9, or 12.8, or 12.51 and I'd still say it's closer to 13, right? So what we then say are the, um, the limits, or the upper and lower limits of true measurement. Sorry, I should have uh, brackets in. So we've got the limit of reading, which is like, well, just look at the units. Just tell me what the units are. You don't even need an object, right? And then you've got, well, what can you truly measure? It's gonna be half of those units on either side. Right? So we'd say plus or minus the greatest possible error. And they use the acronym GPE for that. You sometimes also see AE, which means absolute error, which means exactly the same thing. So maybe I'll put that on here. Okay. So you've got the GPE and the AE, which are actually the same thing, just different names. So on here, we'd say, okay, um, the limits of true measurement on this thing are plus or minus half a centimeter, okay? So this object that I've measured and I've told you it's 13, it could be anywhere 13 plus or minus that half a centimeter. So 12.5 to 13.5. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, now where this is eventually going is um, not just having an absolute error like in centimeters or millimeters or whatever unit you like, but what they call percentage error. Now this is actually quite tricky. It's so tricky, it makes it onto the formula and data sheet. It's not something we're gonna to get to today because I gave you all of the exercises before this. So just know that's on its way in sort of the second half or the third third of this exercise. But this idea of limited accuracy, of being able to say, okay, what's the unit? What's plus or minus half of that? Can I take some measurements on whatever instrument I've got? Um, that's what the next part of 2E is 